So let me just give you a couple of, you know, um, common objections. Um, and I've heard Richard Dawkins give this one uh, where he simply says, well, look, yes, we know that the origin of life is a very unusual occurrence. OK, not denying that. But in a universe with, you know, so many planets, uh, galaxies, you know, potentially planets with life sustaining kind of abilities, then, yeah, it, it, it's going to happen somewhere. I mean, you, it, you just sort of have to look at the scale of the universe, how long it's been around. Yes, and and that kind of um, gives you the odds you need, basically, in the end for and purely natural process, even though it looks incredibly un unlikely for that to occur somewhere, and it happened to be on our planet that it that it in, in fact occurred and it could be occurring on other planets as well. What, what's your response to that? Well, there's been an interesting response from some of the leading people working on origin of life, um, or in molecular biology. Francis Crick in um, a little book, Life Itself, in 1981, posited that that he, he acknowledged that the the odds of life arising on our planet and the uh, were infinitesimally small. That the conditions on our planet were not right for, for example, the formation of proteins from amino acids. I mean, one of the most obvious problems in chemistry, which James Tour has pointed out, is that you don't polymerize, you don't link together amino acids in an aqueous environment. The chemistry is wrong, goes the wrong direction. And yet all of the models, whether it's the hydrothermal vent or the or the prebiotic ocean, or they've all presupposed life arising out of a soup of some kind. We're all the way back to Darwin in his warm little pond. So the conditions here were not right for the spontaneous chemical origin of life. And so what Crick proposed was something that Dawkins himself also uh, entertained, which is the idea that life was uh, somehow either uh, evolved somehow on some other planet and then was seeded here by an intelligence. Um, so that's just uh, maybe a cheeky point on my part, but it's <laughs> something that I think underscores how difficult the problem is from the standpoint of prebiotic chemistry. But I've made a calculation in Signature in the Cell uh, that, that, will, that actually shows that Dawkins is wrong, that the entire universe does not have what are called the probabilistic resources to explain the origin of the first um, crucial biomolecules by by chance alone. And remember, natural selection always operates after the fact of random variation. So you can't invoke natural selection until you get something like a self-replicating RNA molecule or system of molecules or a protein DNA replicating system. So in Signature in the Cell, I made a calculation based on uh, about the chance origin of a protein molecule. You could do a similar calculation for a, a DNA or an RNA molecule. And it turns out that the uh, the number of parameters that have to be right and the um, the constraints that have to be applied to each parameter are such that the that the odds of generating a, a novel protein um, by chance on our planet are vastly greater than the probabilistic resources available. And so it comes down to if every event in the history of planet Earth from the Big Bang till now, where an event is defined as an interaction between elementary particles, were devoted to looking for one of the extremely rare combinations of amino acids that would give you a folded protein, you would you would not have nearly enough time to search but a tiny space of the possibilities such that it would be always overwhelmingly more likely that such a random search would fail than succeed. And I can you know, run the numbers. So any appeal to chance, uh, whether it's, and, and actually I did this not based on the probabilistic universe or resources on planet earth. I did this based on the probabilistic resources from the big bang till now. So, and there's been 10 to the 16th seconds since the big bang, there's 10 to the 80th elementary particles in the universe. There's, there's, so I ran all the numbers and compared it to the vastness of what's called pro, uh, amino acid sequence space and the rarity of proteins within that space. And it turns out, if you change the metaphor a little bit, if you think of all the all the combinations that there could be, the combinations that are functional are a tiny, tiny needle within that that big haystack, and you don't have but a fraction of the time needed to search that that haystack, even with a, a 14 billion year universe. So. I don't think the Dawkins objection solves the problem at, at all, even even as it were kicking it out into space or out into the universe. 
That's that's really interesting. I I, I guess. And, and by the way, just, just no serious origin of life researcher is any longer invoking chance as the explanation for the origin of the first DNA or self-replicating uh, RNA or proteins. They're they're looking either at self-organizational models or uh, trying to find some more favorable environment or something. But chance is really not is not where it's at. But but you don't find that any of the the other kind of naturalistic models hold much water either by the sounds of it steve um so well, so i give them a lot of i give them a lot of uh airtime or or or, or I, I allow them their their due in my in my book especially in in signature in the cell which is my first book about the origin of life i think they have to be taken very seriously i don't dismiss anything in a cavalier way or out of out of hand i spend three chapters on self-organizational models uh one of the the leading proponents of intelligent design another convert to that position is Dean Kenyon, who was a leading origin of life researcher through the 60s, 70s, 80s, and then ended up repudiating his own self-organizational model, which he developed in a, a, a best-selling uh, a graduate, postgraduate level text called Biochemical Predestination. And the, the problem with these self-organizational models, and that's been where a lot of the interest has been in origin of life research, is that they really misunderstand they, they do a great job of explaining what doesn't need to be explained. They explain simple order, repetitive order, not what uh, Leslie Orgel called specified complexity or functional information. Think you know, your, your, your viewers and listeners can think of um, two strings of symbols. You could have the monkey typing gibberish at the typewriter, and maybe you get 40 characters of that. And then below you have a line of poetry, roughly the same length, Time and tide wait for no man. Um, and oh, and a third string would be a, a mantra, um, 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 or ABC, 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 ABC. Self organization does a nice job of explaining repetitive order, like a crystal, NACL, NACL, NACL. Um, these are processes where the underlying physics and chemistry determines a highly order and uh, a highly regular orderly outcome. Uh, you could think of pulling the plug in the bathtub and watching the vortex develop. So the physics of that, the Coriolis forces and gravity uh, will give you that nice orderly structure. But that's not what we have in life. We have, we have not simple order, not mere complexity like the, my, uh, the, the monkey at the typewriter, but a complexity uh, uh, that defies reduction to a simple algorithm or law which is nevertheless specified to achieve a function. And that's what we have with human language. That's what we have with computer code. And that's what we have with the, the, the coding sequences for proteins and DNA. And so, and Crick realized this very early on and um, that, that when we talk about information and DNA, we're talking about a specificity of sequence and therefore not, um, not mere complexity or not simple order. And so that that's and so so, so self organizational processes very it was a very innovative approach it seemed to have promise but there was a conceptual problem at the heart of it in misunderstanding what needed to be explained we're not trying to explain order we're trying to explain information in the sense of specified sequences for function.